All right, fifth graders, this is our electronic math chat number six, and we're going to be reviewing and talking about volume again, but we're going to be talking about volume in a different capacity than what we've talked about it um, in the past. Our I can statement for today is I can use the area and height of a right, right rectangular prism to calculate the volume. So that means we're going to be calculating the volume by looking at just the height and the area of that right rectangular prism. Uh, not looking at length, width, and height, the area and the height. And we are successful when you can, oh, excuse me, that yawn stuck up on me. Um, I am successful when I can type a sentence that explains the relationship between area and volume. So you're successful not only when you can find the volume, but when you can find the area and volume and the relationship between the two of those uh, formulas. I have two questions, or a two-part question that you guys are going to be answering on your own for the activity. But to do my mini lesson, I'm going to head on over here to the, oh, not there, over to my whiteboard. Again, I know this is not perfect. Uh, bear with me as I try to... Uh, work on an online whiteboard to the best of my abilities. I want to start off here by showing you guys uh, a right rectangular prism that I created. Again, not perfect, but I tried. Before we get started, I want to take your uh, attention over here to, um, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Whoops, I guess I have to retype that. Kind of good timing then. I'm going to take your attention over here to our formulas for finding both um, volume and area uh, equals length times width times height. Okay, now that I have those over there, we can kind of talk about them. So our I can statement today is that we can find the volume of a right rectangular prism using the height and using area. Now what I want you guys to see real quick here is that area and volume are the exact same formula except the only difference is, is that with volume, we're adding the height to our formula. So essentially, if I take this height out, length and width being multiplied together are commonalities or things that the area uh, formula has in common with the volume formula. So that tells me that if I have the area of one side of my right rectangular prism, all I need is to multiply that area by the height to get my volume. Because I, if you see right here, length times width is the same as right here. So essentially, I can replace this whole formula with volume. I don't know if you guys can hear Baby Duncan, but he's over here making some noises. He might start crying in a second. Volume equals the same thing as technically just area times my height. And my penmanship isn't perfect here. But again, I want you guys to look at that relationship. I'm able to say that volume is area times height because my area is length times width. And that's essentially my whole formula for volume is length times width times height. But I'm just replacing that length times width with area because they're the same thing. So if I have a right rectangular prism, and they say that my area on one side, oh, you can't really see that color very well. Let's go with red. They say my area for one side of my uh, right rectangular prism, let's say it's 12. It's going to be 12 inches squared. And we know with area, it's squared. It is not cubed. We're only multiplying two things like the width. So the area of just this, the solid filled uh, blue square portion of my right rectangular prism is, oh, sorry, another yawn, is 12 inches squared. Again, that's, uh, thinking of this as like a bedroom, that's how much carpet you need to carpet the bottom layer of the floor. Now, to find the volume of this whole cube, though, we need to find out uh, height. And I'm just going to make up a height here. We're going to say that the height of this right rectangular prism we're going to say it is four inches, okay? We don't know the length and we don't know the width, but we don't need to know the length and the width because we have the area. The area is 
the length times the width already. So you might say, well, to find the volume, I have to have the length and the width and the height. No, as long as you have the area and the height, you don't need length and width because area is the length times width already. It kind of gives you a portion already completed in the formula. So to find volume, I need to multiply my area by my height. Well, in this case, my area is 12 and my height is four. Well, I know that 12 times four is going to get me 48 inches. It's no longer square because I multiplied three things and I'm with volume, so it's going to be cubed. So again, uh, looking at our I can statement, I can use the area and height of a right rectangular prism to calculate the volume. I was able to do that. I was able to use the area and the height to calculate the volume. And the success, I am successful when I can type a sentence that explains the relationship between area and volume. Well, I told you guys that our relationship between area and volume is the area is equals length times width, and that is a portion of the formula for volume. The connection between the two is that if I take the volume and, or to the area and multiply it by the height of a right rectangular prism, I'm going to get the volume. Hmm. Sorry, another yawn. Because they share factors in their formula makeup. So with that being said, I'm going to jump back over here to your guys' um, assignment for this math chat. It says, Aaron says more information is needed to find the volume of the prisms. Explain why Aaron is mistaken and calculate the volume of the prisms. So here is prism A and here is prism B, okay? In order to calculate the volume, we have area and we have, it looks like it's kind of width, but we'll say that's height. And we also have area up top here and height. I want you guys to type in the area, the volume, I'm sorry, for the right rectangular prism here, for A, and for B, here. Once you're done with that, then what I would like you to do is if you scroll down, why was Aaron mistaken? Aaron said that we need more information to solve for volume. We do not need more. I want you to tell me why he was mistaken. And that goes with our success criteria for this electronic math chat. All right, boys and girls, I'm looking forward to seeing your work. Make sure you turn in everything to me. If you have any questions, feel free to message or email me. Have fun and good luck calculating some value, guys.